My guest on the show today is Mike Brennan, and I'm going to try and say this correctly because I love this tagline. Mike is a creator and a communicator. He tells stories on pages and stages. I've seen you do this in one context, and I'm going to read how you do this in another one. So, Mike, welcome. So good to have you on today. How are you? I'm great. Thank you, Jason. I appreciate it. I'm uh, excited to be here today. Yes, I'm going to call this out for all of those listening, which will be all of you because this is not a video podcast. And we're going to get to know Mike. Mike is an artist and he has a brilliant two pictures behind him, both of which I love. One is Robert Downey Jr. and like pop art with the really cool colors. And the others is Chewbacca the Wookiee from Star Wars. So I'm like, yep, to both of those. And they're beautiful. You're obviously, <laughs> we're, you. and we're going to talk about how you're an artist and some of the work that I've seen you do. So, Mike, before we get in to get to know you a little bit better, anything else you want to share with the audience? I just love creativity. And even though visual art is my main background, um, I realize that creativity is a lot bigger, not just for me, but for everyone. So I'm excited to talk about what that looks like beyond just visual art, especially if someone can't relate to visual art. I'm so glad you said this. Because just to say, Mike has an awesome podcast as well, and I do not relate to myself as a visual artist. I'm actually terrible. I have a seven-year-old daughter who is a really good artist already, and she's like, could you do this? Could you do this? Could you do this? I'm like, no. (laughs) But I'm a musician, which is artist, and Mm -hmm. I also create a podcast. I do some other creative things. So I love that topic of creativity and how, at least for me, when I, oh, like, are you creative? I think like, do I, do I paint? Do I draw? Do I do some sort of visual arts? And the answer is no. And if I did, nobody would want to see it, but that there's so many other things, especially in entrepreneurship, there's so many ways to get creative with things. And so many yeah. times we get in the business world, we get so stuck in like the way it has to be in the system and that somebody's telling you how to do it. And the, the best entrepreneurs, I know they're wildly creative in their own artistic way inside of their business. So I'm I'm sure we'll get into that today. And I know you talk a lot about this on your podcast. So Mike, let's get to know you a little bit on the personal side. So let's talk about something that you're nerd out about. So I'm curious what you nerd out about. And I'm going to take Star Wars off the table because that one would just be way (laughs) too easy because we'd also be here all day because I'm also a Star Wars guy as well. (laughs) True, true, true. Yeah. Okay. So I'll back it up from there. And I will just say entertainment in the form of movies and TV. All right, we're, we're, we might still be here all day. I am as well. <laughs> what, what's, what, tell me about something or tell us about something that is new that you're really digging on right now. Yeah, you know, it's funny. I, I have a tendency to consume a lot of movies and TV. And, and sometimes this is as I'm doing something else, right? So I don't want this to make this sound like all I do is sit around and watch TV and movies all day, <laughs> right? Yeah. That's not the case. But I I get informed and inspired a lot by stories. And so naturally, a lot of television and movies present stories that that are inspiring for me. And And sometimes if I'm drawing something on my iPad, I can be sitting on the couch drawing, doing an illustration and having that on in the background and still kind of engaging on that level. But mm-hmm. one of the shows more recently has been The Bear. I don't know if you're familiar with love, that show. Oh, I love, yeah, I love The Bear. Yes. I've, yeah. I've talked about The Bear on this podcast with other guests. That show is brilliant across. I don't know anybody who doesn't like The Bear and anybody who wouldn't like The Bear if they watched it. Unless you just yeah. can't handle intensity, which a few people can't handle intensity. But it's, it's yeah. so good. But I think that there's a – it's funny because somebody told me about it and I started it and I was kind of like, I don't know. I'll give it a chance. We'll see. And by the end, I was like, oh, my gosh, this is amazing. And there's so much in there. Once you get beyond the context of, you know, uh, being a chef and cooking and, and you know, the packaging if it, of it, if you will. I really yeah. enjoyed just their take on creativity, their take on following your passion, on being an entrepreneur, uh, and just even the personal relationships in the show and how the dynamics all worked in there. Just so much in there. Yeah. Th- one of the, the big things is love in spite of. Mm-hmm. like they annoyed each other all like him and his cousin they're always annoyed at each other but they're still like ride or dies which i think is just so cool yeah it's, and like the family dynamics that's a brilliant show maybe maybe we can get uh both of our podcasts sponsored by fx on hulu the bear yeah yeah Let's do <laughs> that it. would be great i'm sure i'm sure their uh, fx is probably tuning in going yes mike exactly. jason you can expect an ad roll offer 
right now. <laughs> TV, TV, entertainment, stories. I also love stories. I, I do some storytelling training, and I, I just love the idea of stories and how they can. They're just so much more memorable than facts and figures at the Absolutely. end of the day. And most everything we can remember about anything has a story attached to it, has some sort of emotion yeah. to it and some sort of art. So let's talk about comfort zones, Mike. So you're an artist, a visual artist, mm-hmm. amongst other things. What's something that is inside of your comfort zone that you know is going to be outside of somebody else's? And it doesn't have to be artistic. I just know that artists generally, my impression of artists is artists generally have a bit more of a wider comfort zone around certain things because it's, as I've been describing that I've interviewed a lot of artists on the show, it's kind of like putting your heart out there for everybody to see because it's actually work that matters yeah, to you personally. So yeah, what's something that you're comfortable with, that it is in your comfort zone? Yeah, I would, I would stay in that lane. I would say, um, <clears throat> and, and not just necessarily again, visual art, but I think the process of creating, coming up with an idea figuring out what does this look like and then carrying that out into execution. Having done that again and again and again, whether that's graphic design, logos, branding, that kind of stuff, having worked in the field a long time ago in different large agencies and stuff, or my own personal work of, you know, illustration and, and art, or even, you know, there was a, a a large portion of my, my past where I was doing a lot of music too. And so Mm. writing some songs for myself and just expressing, (laughs) right? I think that's really at the core of it is figuring out, okay, here's an idea. Here's something I want to say. Here's something that's important to me. How can I use creativity to then make something and say something about what's important to me? Take the flip side now. Flip side of that question. What's something that is uncomfortable for you? You're either not willing to do or, you know, oh, that is just out of my comfort zone. And, you know, other folks, that is that is their thing. Yeah, I would say things that have to do with numbers um, and a lot (laughs) of metrics. Um, Yeah, because I'm such a heart driven guy. A lot of times the typical logic things, um, the typical uh, analytics type of things. I struggle with being able to really process that stuff the way that a lot of other folks, it just comes naturally to them. But again, they're the ones who struggle then with a lot of the expression and the heart stuff. So I've been trying to learn and lean into even just friends who go, you know, statistics. We we said that before, Mm -hmm. right? Stories are so much better than statistics. Yeah. But understanding that when you actually use statistics in a way that you're telling a story, there's value there. And, you know, using people who have done research and and citing that research to be like, okay, it's not just me and my opinion and me feeling good about these things and all flowery, but there's actually some science involved here. There's actually some statistics involved that can back up what it is that I'm saying. And so I've been really trying to shed being so uncomfortable and, and avoiding that stuff and now trying to say, how can I start to pepper some of that stuff in? in a way that feels natural and normal for me, not going overboard and trying to be someone I'm not, but understanding the importance of that stuff, especially in speaking to a wide variety of people because not everyone's wired like I am or like you are. Right. And so we need different access points for people in what we're doing. And uh, so that we're not kind of excluding anybody or, or intentionally just saying, I'm going to be so, so narrow that, you know, this isn't for everyone when really, I think a a topic like creativity that's large enough, I think everybody is creative. So I don't want anybody having a, uh, a cop out saying, you know what, I'm not creative. This isn't for me. I'm, I'm bowing out. Yeah. I have a, I have something on that. I, I do trainings on this very topic around presenting like facts and figures and data more powerfully for a wider audience because, and and this is a very critical business skill Mm -hmm. because most executives Unless you're a very technical executive, you don't want all the details. You don't want all the facts and the figures. You want to know what is the end result and what's next. Like that's what executives get paid to do and business leaders. And I would argue that most entrepreneurs, like for me, like I'll speak for myself, like I don't really care about all the details, but Mm -hmm. what I do care about is how does it make a difference for me? So one of the things that we talk about in one of the companies I do this sort of work with is the idea of combining storytelling with facts and figures. Mm -hmm. So 
and the, I'm just going to offer this to the audience because I know that a lot of people struggle with this is that's like, so I'll give you an example. The, and we use this example in the training is the great garbage patch in the Pacific ocean. It's a garbage patch in the Pacific ocean. It's, I believe it's up to 1.6 million kilometers squared. Now imagine that garbage patch is gross. That's Mm. like Texas twice floating in the Pacific Ocean. And now if you're not a numbers person, you're like, I don't have any idea what 1.6 million kilometers feels like, but I probably can visualize one Texas to Texas floating as garbage. That's just a really easy example, but there's always ways to do that with data and facts and figures that that's like. That'll have people that are more like, sounds like you and I are more similar, like, oh, I want to be able to visualize what is, how does that mean in context in relation to everything else? Because as we know, numbers by themselves don't mean anything, right? Like usually, yeah. so really interesting. And I'm, I'm this. I don't mind numbers because I come from a technology and sales background. But I much prefer when people speak to me in analogies and metaphors. And 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 you know, you you do a lot of do a lot of work with. We met at a speaking event. The best speakers know how to do this. Yes. When they're not just presenting, they're not just presenting. Hey, here's these marketing metrics. Be like, oh, and here's how this matters to you. And how it may matter to you is like, that's like this, or that mm-hmm. is the result of this. It's really cool. I think we're, we're aligned on this. And it's funny because the community we met in is filled with people that love numbers. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> like performance <laughs> marketing and ad marketing. And I'm just like, yes, internet marketing is, it's, it's all numbers based. I'm like, oh, this is so boring. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, the funny thing just... is, is surrounding yourself with people like that helps you because yeah. you're, you're not you're not simply going to okay everyone else is like me you're forcing yeah. yourself out of your comfort zone like you were saying before you know and you're surrounding yourself with people who think differently therefore challenge the way that you see things and think about things and i think it's really important to do that and be intentional about that because it's too easy just to keep going like oh, i'll just hang out with my people and it'll be great yeah well the, the last thing i'll say on this topic is obviously i love this topic is the idea that to s- likely to sell something to me or to Mike, your facts and figures aren't going to do it because I'm already mm-hmm. going to know the facts and figures. I've already done the research. And, and we talk about this a lot, how car salespeople are generally really good at that because they know to get at the heart. Hey, what's the most important thing for you that's going to have you leave with this car? Oh, I want safety. That's a hard thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I can, you can give me the stats on the safety, but for you to say, hey, this won an award and here's why I won an award. And we know that this, that's more powerful than here's a percentage of times that this car is blankety blank, blank, blank. And that just is an easier way to connect. Now, yeah. Mike, before we go to a real brief break, let's talk a little bit about what you would speak to us all about if everybody in the world got to listen right now. And you got, I give you five minutes and said, hey, Mike, what's the thing that you know or you believe in so strongly that you're going to use your five minutes of fame to speak about? What would you talk to us about? And what would be your call to action at the end of that? Yes. Uh, I would talk about the importance of fun and Mm. with that creativity as a tool to have fun. Mm. And like I said before, I really believe that everyone's creative. It's just a matter of how that creativity shows up and then being intentional about that. Once you realize, oh, creativity doesn't mean being artistic, like we said before, It, it means the way that you see something and what you do about that. So it could be systems, it could be a business, it could be artwork, it could be music, but it's so much grander than what we usually think of. And so when we recognize our place in the grand scheme of creativity, then we can start to harness the power of it and start to see the effects of that and the results of that in our lives. And along the way, we're looking to enjoy ourselves, right? We're looking to create things that matter and um, enjoy the process as well as the results. And so having fun, I think is key. And too often it's people think of fun as the reward, as opposed to part of the process. And I want to challenge that to say, let's make this part of the process instead of the, the reward, the cherry on top, because let's be honest. So many times we work, 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 work. And very rarely do we get to that point where we can actually enjoy the thing that we said that we were going to enjoy. It's the, yeah. I'll do this when I retire. I'll do this when <sighs> later on. And we're always driving, always pushing, always about progress, which is great. 
But if we don't stop and celebrate, if we don't stop and look to have fun on a regular basis, enjoyment is going to be elusive. And uh, we can yeah. only go so far in the work that we do and how we show up in, in work and in life if we're not enjoying ourselves, if we're not having fun and knowing what that fun looks like for us as an individual. Yeah, I, man, this is a great callback. I was, I'm a member of a, a wonderful men's group run by two people who've actually been on this podcast, Bob Conlon and Alex Terranova. And each month, by the way, just to give it a plug, it's called The Cor Torch. It's actually free. And it's for men, people identify as men, men only. And we get together and we talk about things just like this. And each month there's a theme. November's theme was play, fun, play. Mm. And we went around and what's your relationship to fun? I happen to be with you. Like I try to have fun in everything I do, even if I don't always feel like the result is there. But one person said something that really struck me. And he's a, I know him. He's a brilliant guy. He's very successful. He said, for me, my relationship to play and fun historically has been, it's a reward to be earned after I've taken care of all the hard shit. Yes. Once mm -hmm. my family's taken care of, and my spouse is taken care of, and I paid the bills and we've saved for retirement and all these other things, then finally I can like, and he's not talking about when he's retired. He's talking about like right. then. Yeah. And when he, and he said this and he's a coach, so he's, he's done a lot of personal development work. He said something like, he goes, and I realize this is not healthy mm -hmm. because if I hold it as a reward, one, it sets the, the stakes high on it. And two, I'm just robbing myself and potentially others I'm spending time with from having fun, even when things aren't going exactly as they should be, because they're never going to go Absolutely. exactly how they are. And I love yeah. that, Mike, man, that's, that's a whole, that, that's a, probably a whole podcast in and of itself. I love that. <laughs> We're going to take a brief commercial break. We'll be right back after this. The Talking to Cool People podcast is brought to you by Jason Frizzell Coaching. Jason works with amazing people who are looking to find and develop their passion and purpose and create their journey to wherever it is they want to go. Check us out at jasonfrizzell.com, Facebook, or on Instagram. Jason loves hearing from anyone who thinks it would be cool to connect, to be coached, or to be a guest on our show. Email him at podcast at jasonfrizzell.com or DM him on Facebook and Instagram. And now, back to some more amazing conversation on talking to cool people. All right, Mike, we are back. I want to frame up the, the rest of our conversation today around a couple of things. And you and I are improv improvisational people. We're going to have a great conversation here. I want to talk about two things. One, telling stories on pages and stages. What mm -hmm. the heck does that mean? <laughs> and leading into the second part, a little bit of a, little bit of a uh, sneak preview, is you're also an author. Mm -hmm. And you wrote a book on fun. And so I want to talk a little bit about the genesis of the book, why you needed to do that. Most of the time when I interview authors, they'll say, I have this thing that I have to get out to the world because mm -hmm. it's important that I share my voice. So Mike, first of all, let's, let's kick off with telling stories on pages and stages. Yes. I, I'm a yeah. five-year-old. I have no idea what that means. <laughs> Educate me. <laughs> yes. And, and that's intentional, right? Because yeah, absolutely. It, it, it encompasses the fact that I do a bunch of different things. I am not simply the one lane, one thing, ride it out kind of guy. And I think that also speaks to creativity, right? A lot of people who embrace their creativity, they realize that they have multiple interests, multiple passions. And it's figuring out how do you do that in such a way, especially in a business context, where it doesn't get cloudy, murky, where it doesn't confuse people. And so I realized that there are several things that I like to do beyond just visual art. Visual art, again, is my background. I did go to art mm -hmm. school. I went, I was in graphic design, like I said, in the field for years in various organizations. And I realized that there were other things that I enjoyed, right? I enjoyed speaking. I enjoyed communicating through another means besides just visual. And so on my journey in evolution, I realized that these things weren't in competition with each other as far as parts mm. of me, because early on, they felt that way. It felt like if I oh, gave attention brilliant. to one thing, then the other thing was starving and crying out for attention. So it was the spinning place thing, right? I'd spin this plate over here. Oh, and this one's starting to fall. So let me go over here and do this one. And it was always feeling like these pieces of me were in competition until one day I realized I'm like, no, actually, these are all part of me. And there are certain seasons and certain times at which 
one takes the foreground and the other goes background a little bit. And that's okay. And so, and then being intentional about that. So in terms of telling stories on pages and stages, you know, at the heart of things, I love to tell stories. I love stories, as I mentioned before, and just watching and engaging and what stories can do as far as conveying ideas and inspiring somebody and teaching someone, conveying experiences. And so I, I learned that I'm like, you know, I have stories of my own. And there are experiences that I've had that I think are not just valuable for me, but I think they're valuable for other people. And so I want to talk about those things very candidly and openly, some of them being things that most people don't want to talk about, such as struggling with mental health, right? Mm -hmm. I talk Mm -hmm. about some of those things because I believe it's important for me to be able to say, hey, you know, this has been my experience. And this is something that most people want to just tuck away and ignore and not talk about. But I think it's important to take it out and talk about it because then it helps more people. Then it shines a light on this and redeems this so that it can help somebody else to be like, oh, I'm not the only one. So in terms of pages and stages, pages being obviously a page in a book, it could be right. Like, like you said, you know, writing books, I have some illustrated books that I've done also. It could also be you know, pages in terms of illustration on a page or a digital page, if you will, if it's yeah. digital illustration, like going to events and doing the live sketching of the events, like how you saw me do that stuff live. Yeah, it's beautiful. At, at the event yeah. we were at. That's that's an example of what a page could look like. And stages, it's yes, getting on a stage and speaking, right? Public speaking, I do that. It's workshops with organizations, yes. It's also podcasts, right? It's me being able to use a stage, a platform, whatever that looks like, to be able to convey these ideas and teach people and help people and in, in inspire them and give them practical steps, not just inspire, mm-hmm. but it's important for me yeah. to be able to be like, you know, yes, here's my context, here's my story. I hope it inspires you. I hope it shows you that if I can do this, you can do this too. But I don't want to leave you there. I want to leave you with, now what? How can you start to make some progress on this in your own life and boil things down into small, manageable steps so that people can start to get access to this, apply it, and then see those results in their own lives? I like something you – I like all of what you said there. I like one thing out of all that you said, like the rest of it, I throw it. No, I like it. I like it all. There's something that you said that I really appreciate as, as somebody who historically had a career that I wouldn't say was wildly creative. I was in sales. Sales is is sort of about creativity, but it's mostly about strategy that like has Mm -hmm. kind of worked before. I really like the idea when you're speaking to corporate settings and people in corporate about this, you're doing workshops and such is so what? Mm-hmm. Yeah, of course. So I think creativity in some ways is a basic human need, the ability to express yourself. And people I think people either do it healthily or sometimes mm-hmm. very unhealthily, right? Like, and we could think of all sorts of ways people do that. But I, I think, and I'm, I'm picturing myself 10 years ago before I knew this about it, like, great, got this mic, guy, Mike, I'm just visualizing my visual. I'm telling a story to myself right now. I'm in, I'm at a, I'm at a sales kickoff and Mike comes up and he's talking to us about creativity. And I go, that sounds wonderful but I'm a salesperson. Mm -hmm. So what do I do next? And I love that you teach what I can do next, because I think that gets lost a lot Mm -hmm. in, in the world of creativity is like, Oh, it's so important to be creative and companies talk about, Oh, we're our, our staff is creative and we're doing this, but then you go, well, what does that mean? Or how do I do that? And Mm -hmm. they go, well, and, and there's nothing after that. So I love the idea. So if we could just steal a little bit of your brain here for a minute, Mm -hmm. have somebody listening, and they go, wow, that resonates for me. I have a job that I find is not very creative or, and I'm speaking for myself, we're in the middle of raising two young children right now. It mm-hmm. feels like a little lack of creativity with a three-year-old sometimes about like, we got some real results and it's to get that little dude in bed because he doesn't want to go to bed. What are, how would you suggest that somebody who wants to have more creativity in their life and then maybe they feel a little constricted or constrained, what's, what, what's something that people can do, can start? Yeah, I think... First off, it's it's identifying what does that look like for the person, right? And so is that something that is more of an outside of work thing? Is it a hobby thing that they need to get back in touch with? Maybe something, that, an activity they used to do when they were younger that that kind of really lit them up. That's a different conversation than someone who's like, hey, I'm in this position 
in my organization and I'm trying to figure out how to apply creativity to it, like you said, in sales, right? Yeah. And so I think it's first identifying like, what's the goal? What is it that we want to arrive at? How do we want to mm. apply creativity, right? And so once we figure out that, we can kind of steer the ship a little bit easier and, and more specific towards a goal and say, okay, if it's something of getting back in touch with something that meant something to you at one point previous in your life, how can we come back to that? And most of the time, people think they need large amounts of time. They need yep. expensive equipment or expensive, a lavish, you know, whatever it is, right? Yeah. But yep. Yep. my experience <laughs> has been, no, actually, it's the opposite. Because I walked away from my creativity and my art for about 10 years and did nothing personally, professionally. I was doing something different. And I actually suffered from depression. That's where that, that story comes in. And mm. it was because I wasn't showing up how I'm wired to show up. I was denying that part of me. And it eventually got to the place where it was so bad, where I needed to address this. And there's a whole long story there. But what that ended up doing was it was a catalyst for me to come back to my own creativity. And for Love me, that. it looked like, okay, I'm suffering from depression. I know that I want to engage with my art again. I don't even know if I can do this after being away from it for 10 years. What does that look like? What do I even want to do? I had so many questions and it was loaded with, I I. I'm, I don't have a lot of energy. I don't have a lot of effort mm -hmm. I can put into this because I'm depressed mm -hmm. because I'm trying to figure this out. And so this is where my daily creative habit has come into play. And I, I teach this and talk about this. And I say, it, it was me showing up saying, I'm going to show up every day. And that sounds daunting at first because you're like, how are you going to show yeah. up every day and do something that's crazy? But I boiled it down to a small step. And I was like, all I can muster right now is 15 minutes. 15 minutes doesn't sound like a lot. Because we think, what can I produce that's going to be of value in 15 minutes? But I had to realize that it was more about the journey of creativity than it was about the product of the creativity. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. So doing 15 minutes, it was getting reps in, right? It was getting familiar. It was getting, it, it's like a muscle, right? You start flexing that creative muscle. The more that you do that, the easier things become. The more you can follow curiosity, the more that you can experiment and say, what do I want to do here? What do I want this to look like? Let me try things. Let me follow this and see where it goes because I know it's going someplace. I may not know exactly where. And so that was my context and story. And, and through that, as I showed up again and again, and, and now it's like 12 years later where every single day I've done something that's been a, a creative act. And, and some of that has morphed from purely visual art to into even some more writing and things of other creative expressions, but showing up every day, feeding that creative self, because I'm like, if I truly want to experience the results and benefits of creativity, not just professionally, but personally, then I need to be prioritizing for that. And if I, if yeah. I need to prioritize for it, it needs to be a daily thing for me because it's like eating, it's like sleeping. That's and right the more you do that, the more you start to uncover and discover, and the more than you can start to harness that with intentionality. Yeah. I love the, you know, I do executive coaching. And one of the things you hear all the time from every, from almost everybody I work with is I should do more of blank. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the next question I generally ask is what would it look like to start? Mm-hmm. And it's so funny that you that this topic to me is funny because intellectually everybody gets it. Mm -hmm. Oh, I should have more of a creative outlet. What would be a natural thing I should do? Oh, I should do it five minutes a day, 10 minutes a day, 15 minutes a day. What do most people actually do, though, once you get past the intellectual part of knowing the logic behind it is they go, well, I don't have time. Mm -hmm. Or, oh, it feels like a lot. It feels hard. Or like you said, oh, I don't have, you know, if you're a musician, I don't have the right equipment. I don't know the right yep. people. I have to pay for a course and all these things versus mm -hmm. just starting and building that muscle. Is, and it's been a big game changer for me because I used to be that person. I'm like, I'd like to do that, but mm -hmm. here's a list of reasons why. And sometimes the reasons yeah. are really valid. And sometimes they're just like, comes from like, it's uncomfortable or it's fearful or we're afraid we're yeah. not going to be good at it or something. So brilliant i want to i want to take a a brief pause and you mentioned how we met i want to shout you out i was at a, a conference with speakers and mike was sitting to the right of the stage and i remember this and you had your ipad out mm -hmm. with an app i believe with an apple pencil yeah. i have a i have a client who does this too and it just 
blow as somebody who has no idea how to draw anything drawing with an apple pencil on an ipad just blows my mind and i was literally watching in real time as these speakers these amazing speakers were up there mike was sketching them in action and the result of it is i would say that your art style it's similar to what you have behind you mr downey jr behind you it looks like robert downey jr but it's not like a photo of robert downey jr Mm -hmm. it's like kind of like I don't know if that's your own interpretation or what the colors or just mm-hmm. what happens to you in the moment, but it's really cool. So I just want to give you a quick shout out. Check out Mike's website because it's very cool stuff. Like I love your style. It's very modern, looks great. And also you can tell that you put your own unique flavor to it. And that's how I saw it. And it's very interesting when you're at a conference and you look over and you see this person like furiously like drawing on their iPad. Like, <laughs> what is this person doing? You probably have yeah. people go, what are you doing over there? And you're like, this is what I'm doing. And I'm for the audience, I'm yeah. holding up an iPad. You're like, I'm actually drawing the speakers right now. Mm-hmm. I would imagine that generates a lot of business for you because people are like, that's fascinating. That's super cool. It's not a normal yes. thing to see somebody sketching at a conference. Right. Yeah. yeah. And that's part of storytelling too, right? It's marketing because I'm I'm capturing moments, but it's it's storytelling. It's saying, I'm at an event. Here's what's happening at the event through my eyes and through my interpretation artistically. And then those images can then be used for social media, you know, what have you, all sorts of different things. It, it is it is being a presence and capturing the event in real time. Yeah. Now let's talk about your book. Mm-hmm. Every author I've ever interviewed, and there's been a lot on this podcast, has told me that they have to write their book. Mm -hmm. Do you feel that way? Did you feel that way when you wrote wrote the book we're going to talk about, the book book about having fun? Did you feel like you had Uh, to? By had to, meaning it was not that you have to financially, but like it's something Mm -hmm. that really is inside of you that needs to get out. Yes. Uh, I will say yes and no. And what I mean by that is I wasn't planning on this book. It, mm-hmm. it kind of emerged out of some conversations. And then once it became apparent that this was something that needed to happen, then it was like, okay, it's go time. And and then I had to employ a process for me to actually sit and write the book and 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 hack things where I'm writing the book on, on my phone, honestly, when I was on walks and mm. figuring out what that looked like for me practically so that I wasn't just simply sitting in front of a computer and typing because that process wasn't something that seemed very accessible to me. I love that you said this, Mike, because people tell me, and you know, we have a lot of mutual friends. People tell me all the time, oh, you should write a book. And I'm like, that sounds miserable. Yeah. But what I'm actually saying, as you say that, I just had a huge epiphany. What I'm actually saying is sitting in front of my computer, typing out a book sounds miserable. Yeah. The idea of transcribing it, doing it on a walk, recording it, using some AI prompts, that doesn't sound Mm -hmm. so terrible because I have a lot to talk about, but that process, I'm realizing, like you just had a huge moment for me. I'm realizing I have a limiting belief that writing a book means I'm sitting in front of my computer by myself typing, but that's not really the case for a lot of people anymore. No, no. And, and I really had to, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking to myself, I'm writing a book about fun. The process needs to be fun. Like, yeah, I can't right. be, you know. <laughs> like, this is a horrible process to be fun. Exactly. Book. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever seen that gif. I think it's from some reality show. And the woman's like, we're about to have some fun. And like, she's like yelling. <laughs> I think it's like a dance show. And she's the epitome of not fun. Like, there's nothing That's fun right. about this at all. Just exactly. screaming about it. So let's talk about the book now. So you wrote a book about having mm-hmm. more fun. Yeah. Yeah, make fun a habit. And the idea there is, you know, again, going, borrowing from my daily creative habit journey of going every single day I have opportunity and it's being aware of that opportunity and being intentional about that. And so I was like, realizing that even in doing a lot of work that's creative, there comes a point at which you can wake up one day and go, fun left the building somewhere along the way. Like I'm, I'm, I'm trying to build things as an entrepreneur. I'm testing things. I'm, I'm, you know, there's, there's a lot of hard work. There's a lot of, of just stuff that doesn't seem fun. And when you realize that fun kind of left somewhere along the way and you weren't even aware of it, that's not an alarming place to be. And so I was thinking to myself, okay, much like my creativity, how can I get back to a place of enjoyment of daily fun 
And even in things that don't seem like they're fun, how can I start to gamify some things? How can I start to inject some fun into things that seem the furthest away from fun? And it's interesting because as I start to dive into this topic and I start to talk to more and more people, you know, fun, again, is another word that I think we need to define for ourselves. Because my definition of fun and your definition of fun could be wildly different. Totally. And so I, uh, the thing is, I'm like, the last thing I'm trying to tell people, and I, and I do this when I'm in, in workshops with people too, or especially in, in corporations, you know, they think, well, you know, fun, are we going to be like sitting around with like silly string and like party hats and clown noses? Because like, they, you know, the eye roll is hard in that reaction, which I get. Right? That doesn't sound um, fun to me either. And I love fun. No. Right. <laughs> Some people that's fun. Some people it's sure. like, you know, it's yeah. zany. It's crazy. It's like, hey, yeah. hey, you know, uh, if that's your version of fun, great. Embrace it and run with it. But it doesn't need to be just that. Just like there are many forms of creativity that I said before, there are many forms of fun and it's identifying what fun looks like for you and then being intentional about, you know, harnessing that so that you can get the, 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 the rewards of that, you know, yield the, the, the results of that. And, you know, it, it could be something simple. Again, it could be something such as, you know, creating a playlist of music that you really enjoy that is upbeat, right? I created a, a, a make fun of habit, you know, playlist on Spotify. That's just these songs that are uplifting, upbeat, kind of fun stuff that you can put on. And even if it's just in the background, it can affect your mood. And so if you're doing something, you're doing some tasks that seem menial or just maybe a little dreadful. If you put something real, real on quick, like that, Ma you can... uh, sorry, Mike, want to pause for a minute. Said playlist will be in yeah. the show notes. Yes. If somebody <laughs> wants to click on that, I certainly will. Yeah. I just want to put that in yes. there. Love to check yeah. out Mike's playlist. So things, small things like that can make a big difference, right? I talk about, there's a, there's a chapter in the book where I talk about doodling and how, you know, when you were in school, a lot of times you got yelled at for doodling. You know, Absolutely. you're not paying attention. You're, you're, you know, you're making a mess of something. You're just, you know, but I talk about the importance of actually using that on purpose, because if we're listening to somebody and we start doodling and we can start to make visual symbols for ourselves or cues to remember what somebody's saying, that's actually more powerful. And I think that's something to be encouraged. And we can have fun doing that as opposed to, okay, I'm supposed to sit here. I'm supposed to keep my eyes open. I'm supposed to look engaged yeah. and feel, you know, and force yourself into that place. And so these little hacks and tricks, and sometimes they have to do with, with things that are, are, are like art or music or, or even dance or things like that. And sometimes it's more about your outlook and your mindset, which I think really all of it starts there, right? Fun starts in your mind to say, yeah. I'm going to be curious. I'm going to be open. What is possible? Because fun equals possibility. And so yes, it does. maybe having fun one day is going, instead of going my usual route home, driving from point A to point B, I'm going to take a different way home and just yeah. be open to what I see and discover. Because maybe you find a park or maybe you find a store or maybe you find something along the way that's right around where you are, but you had no idea because you're so about you know efficiency of getting from point A to point B. And so yeah. getting yourself yeah. out of that, getting in the pattern interrupter to be able to introduce something new that could be fun, gets you in a different place and makes you open. And that could actually introduce something that is really useful for you personally or professionally. Maybe you have a conversation with somebody because you stopped at that park and all of a sudden it unlocks an idea that you've been noodling on for a long time. And you just sort of like, I can't solve this problem. So and fun. I have this conversation with this person. Boom. Now I can take this back over to work. So it's not, you know, we're not these segmented beings that we like to say, well, it's like this, ha you know, work happens from nine to five in this box and yeah. all this kind of yeah, stuff, yeah. you know, ideas, creativity, all that stuff, fun, it overlaps because where it, it, it's us as a person and wherever we go, that's where we bring it. And so it's being intentional about that stuff. So this book is really designed yeah. to give 30 short chapters that are very specific about uh, a topic that's each chapter. You can do it like one one a day for a month, or you can jump into it wherever you like to use it as a reference manual. I did that on purpose so yeah, that you beautiful. can bring yourself and your own process to the book. There are questions at the end of each chapter, and there's also exercises for people to start to put some of the stuff into practice again, because I don't want to just say, here's my story, here's my experiences, inspiration, <laughs> but let's get practical. Let's actually start having people yeah. experience more fun. 
Yeah, I'm definitely gonna I'm definitely gonna read it. I one of the things that I asked Mike before we started recording is all the authors is I'm gonna buy your book, but you need to sign it, and then I'm yeah. gonna read it. And that's so I'm just sharing that with everybody. But you know, it's it, I, I love that format because there are people that go starting and finishing a book is not fun, right? Like that's not yeah. how their mind works. I I, I love that form. That works really well for me. I, I I thought for a minute. I have to tell you as we start to wrap here, what ca- crossed my mind for a minute. You live in New Jersey, mm-hmm. and I'm in New York. <laughs> I thought to myself, if you're about to tell me sitting in New Jersey rush hour or New York City rush hour traffic is fun. <laughs> We might have to just like never air this podcast. Like that is not fun. That is not fun. So you're referring to like in your town or you're not in the Garden State Parkway or the Turnpike. I'm I'm being facetious because yes. I'm, if you live in this area of the country, you know that there are times when you're like, this is the le- one of the least fun, that can, fun things that can ever happen to me is sitting yeah. in this snarled well, up traffic. You know, and you mentioned that. And, and I have to say, you know, I've, there have been several occasions recently where I found myself having to go into New York City and go through the tunnel, which is always backed up and through all <sighs> the different pathways. And I'm like, I can feel my body starting to, to react to it. Right. And so yeah. when I'm aware of it, I have a choice and I say, yeah. OK, I can either give in to this frustration and start to complain and grumble or I'm stuck. There's nothing I can do right now, but there is actually something I can do. Can I put on that playlist and start to change my attitude and my mood? Or can I make a phone call to someone and encourage them? Can I, like, I start looking for possibilities. And I think really that's at the root again of fun is it, it, it makes opportunities and possibilities because you're open. You're not simply like, this sucks. I hate this. You know, you don't shut down. You actually open up. Yeah. Well, Mike, I want to thank you for coming on today. Really awesome conversation. We're we're just getting to know each other. We didn't get to spend much one on one time, but I think we're pretty aligned. Other than you don't want me drawing on an iPad or on a piece of paper or anything, I tried with my daughter, and it's I'm getting crushed by my my creative artistic soul. As I always know to be true, is crushed by a seven year old. But what I will say is I'm so aligned with all this for each of us in our own unique way, whatever that thing is. For some of us, we're brilliant artists. Some of us were musicians. Some of us, we're brilliant business strategists where we use our creativity to come up with ways of doing things or ways of being better at things that have never been done before and everything in between. So I just want to thank you for the work you're doing for all of us out here because this is such a, such a, what I think is an important topic and much needed in the world because I think a lack of creativity around even things like problem solving is what creates a lot of the big issues in our world is a lack of creative thinking and thinking Mm -hmm. about like, well, this is the way it's either always been done, or this is the thing that we have to have, which is just limited thinking reduces the curiosity and results in more unhappiness, more turmoil, more strife, et cetera. So thank you. I really appreciate you having on today, Mike. Thanks so much for the conversation. It's my pleasure. I love it. Everything that we talked about today with Mike will be in the show notes and Mike will have you back again again soon because who doesn't need more fun in their life? And if you're still listening, you probably know that I'm about fun. So you probably agree. And we'll see you guys back again soon, Mike. Thanks so much. Thanks for listening to another episode of Talking to Cool People with Jason Frizzell. If you enjoyed today's episode, please tell your friends. Follow us on Instagram and Facebook and give us a shout out or take a moment to leave a review on iTunes. If something from today's episode piqued your interest and you'd like to connect, email us at podcast at jasonfrizzell.com. We love hearing from our listeners because you're cool people too. 